Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and our first video of the year in 2024. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, my art journey, and I'm going to discuss mental health and addiction as well. The inspiration for this video came a few nights ago when I had an unexpected insight. I broke down into tears watching a YouTube video and I want to tell you why. For the uninitiated, Corridor Crew is a YouTube channel with a group of talented artists that specialize in special effects, and they invite industry professionals to discuss their work with them. My wife and I were watching an Animators React episode with the renowned animator Aaron Blaze. Aaron is an animator responsible for some of our favorite childhood movies, all the way back to uh, The Rescuers Down Under, Lion King, Mulan, and more. Aaron was discussing his work on Brother Bear, a movie he directed, and he was sharing the creative process. Uh, he was showing clips of uh, behind-the-scenes footage and some photos and stuff like that. At one point, uh, Peter from the Corridor crew pointed out that the background landscapes were stunning. And at that point, they cut to a photo of the gentleman responsible for painting them. He was standing behind his easel, holding a paintbrush, and the painting was indeed beautiful. At that point, something in my chest, a knot, kind of worked its way up. And it just kind of burst out of me. I started sobbing. I, I didn't know why. I didn't know what was happening. My wife slid over next to me, gently asked me what was going on for me. And it took a while. I couldn't figure it out, actually. Looking over at the screen, she had paused it. It was paused on a group shot of a bunch of the animators and the creators that were, had worked on Brother Bear film. At that point, I mumbled something akin to, look at those beautiful people. I hate them. I had more tears and then more mumbled words. I said something like, I wasn't there for myself. I didn't support myself. I said, these are my people. I never got a chance to meet them. I was slowly starting to realize why sometimes I have a hard time enjoying the creative work of others. There's jealousy, envy, and the big one, shame. The rest of this video is my attempt at trying to work out what happened in that moment. Ever since I was a child, I loved to draw, but like every child, I liked a lot of things. We like to play baseball, we like to ride our bikes, we like to explore the woods. Looking back at those days, there was a lot of fun, but there was also a lot of pain. There was a lot of bullying, there was a lot of fighting, there was a lot of trauma from all kinds of places. And generally, I don't like to revisit, I don't like to think about those days. And until recently, I had a surefire way of avoiding just that. See, our minds are magical. They adapt and they protect us without our awareness. Aware, without our awareness. As we grow, these adaptions become who we are. By the time I reached high school, I had built a personality that was strategized to protect me from the pain from earlier years. When new challenges presented, I adapted and changed. By the time uh, college came around and new challenges presented, I adapted and changed again. Eventually, after all those changes, I had lost a lot of that childhood self, like a lot of us, you know, including the faith I had in myself. One of the adaptions that worked really well was numbing. Alcohol, drugs, partying, distracting myself. Without realizing it, I was shrinking my world and I was shrinking the view I had of myself. After college, the partying continued and the numbness along with it, coasting along, letting the adaptive mind take over, protecting me. There were many pains and scars that the self remembered and wanted to protect me from. I have been a functioning alcoholic for many years. I was able to get jobs, make friends, find love, but it was all fleeting. I could never hold on to any of it. The protective, adaptive mind needed to numb away my pain, and it just didn't mix well with life. 
I continued to try new things and then give up when everything got too hard. And I would uh, just try something new. I was recreating myself every few years. Going back to school, traveling overseas, and back again. Nothing really changed. One of the recreations I attempted almost 15 years ago was to pick up the pencil again. I thought, let me try to recapture some of that childhood joy of drawing. I'll combine it with my love of animation and I'll become an animator. It was my late 20s and I figured, eh, it's not too late. So I set out on a journey to relearn how to draw. I enrolled in some art fundamental courses and I found some mentors on Craigslist of all places. And uh, together we worked uh, to build a portfolio for animation school. I even joined another artist in some cheap studio space and we kind of worked together to hone our skills, um, hiring a, like a life model drawing, uh, hiring a model to practice our life drawing. Uh, we had a showcase of our work. We had some live music and put our work on the walls, invited our friends and family. All of it paid off because by the end of it, I had a portfolio that animation school admissions accepted. So I got into animation school after about a year of hard work. Animation school was everything I'd hoped it would be. My classmates were fun, talented people, and my instructors were a group of talented, uh, experienced uh, professionals, industry professionals. I had my own light table. I had my own workspace. Everything seemed to be coming together. Of course, my habits of drinking and other drugs were still present, and eventually it all got in the way. They said, we don't actually belong here. This is too hard. We're not going to succeed when we graduate. After about a year and a half of just a two-year program, I decided to toss in the towel. I remember the night I was working on a character design assignment and I had a massive case of imposter syndrome. I decided in the morning I was just going to tell my instructors that I was gone, right? So that's what I did. The next day I told my instructors I was leaving. I packed up my stuff and I left. That day I regret with so much shame. That shame lives together with a bunch of other shame that I had kind of built up over the years. It was under the surface, held down nice and tight by a lot of the numbing I was doing. So I decided to move on once again. Move on, I did. I went back to school for the fourth time. By this time, I had studied engineering, mathematics, economics. I studied music. I studied recording engineering. I taught English in Japan. I came back, worked in sales, worked as a medical lab technician. Um, all of this before I even tried animation, right? So now I was circling back to science. I got a diploma in environmental sciences, which I was lucky enough to meet the uh, love of my life, my future wife. And I was able to build a career in water treatment. So everything was coming together again. I was making enough to pay the bills and live a modest life. Until a few years ago, that is. The numbing I did to keep all the piled up pain down became a problem in my marriage. It would become a turning point for me. I was going to lose it all again, going to have to start all over again at the age of 40. My wife was ready to leave any moment if I didn't make the changes necessary to become a person that was present for her, become the partner she wanted and needed and deserved. My world had really kind of shrunk by that point. I only had a handful of people left in my life. Um, and I wasn't present for them either. They had stuck by me so far, despite my absence, despite my numb kind of attitude. Luckily, with the guidance of a wonderful therapist and the love and support of those handful of people, I was able to start seeing my drinking for the problem it was. And so slowly, layer by layer, we pulled back and revealed the pain underneath. We taught my mind new tools to deal with these uh, challenges. Challenges that are just basically unavoidable in life. So this process started a few years ago and it continues today. I picked up the pencil again last year in 2023 and it turned out to be a very healing thing to do. I was not completely over the numbing, 
but uh, drawing and painting every day or nearly every day uh, was just uh, something I really needed to do. I'm not ashamed to admit that I had these problems, and I still do, because I can see them clearly now for what they are. Each day is a chance to start over, and that doesn't mean giving up, it means trying again. This past Christmas season, my wife and I caught the flu, and we were sick enough to stay home and try to recoup together. During this period, I haven't had a drink or a smoke or anything else. And as of writing this, or as of recording this, uh, it's been nine days of sobriety, which is nine days more than I've had in a long time. It brings a clarity and an energy I haven't felt in a long time. And after being numb for so long, it's hard to really kind of fully describe. That night, when I cried over that YouTube video, it kind of came up like a volcanic eruption. It burst forth out of nowhere. I feel a strength now, something new, something different. I haven't felt this good in a long time. I've tried to quit drinking in the past a lot of times, but uh, this feels different. I think it's because I recognize the shame of quitting animation uh, because I had been denying that for a long time. It was the reason, I think, that I hated to watch other people draw and create. It was the jealousy of their talent or the feeling that I could do it better. There was an envy that they could make art for a living and I didn't. But I think most of all, it was the shame of knowing that I had given up when I had my chance. I had a deep loneliness that uh, built from keeping people at arm's length until they all just kind of left. It resulted in uh, this feeling that I had no people to call my own, feeling misunderstood or unseen. All of this, and I'm sure more, was packed into that kind of burst of emotions. And uh, as it spewed out without recognition in that moment, all I could say was, look at those beautiful people. I hate them. I don't hate them. I love them. After the tears slowed and my wife held me close, I was able to say, I can be beautiful too. Suddenly, my jealousy was gone. My envy vanished and was replaced with an appreciation and love for these creators. And I knew I could enjoy art again in a true way. I could make my own art in a true way. I share this because I don't think my story is all that unique. I think a lot of us have had experiences like this, whether we realize it or not. I know it took me until my 40s to realize what was going on, but I got there and so can you. Our world is in so much pain because individually we've all felt so much pain. If any of this resonates with you, I hope you find the strength within yourself to love yourself and see your own worth. So no more imposter syndrome, no more comparing against each other, just learning, growing, sharing with each other and loving every moment of it. So with that, I'll say make art, make love, Make peace and be good to each other. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.